Welcome to this message of encouragement. Today we're going to take a closer look at John 3.16. Before we get started, I would like to ask that those of you who are watching, if you would please remember me in prayer. I would also like to ask that you please remember our leaders in prayer, as well as those who are in positions of authority. Psalms chapter 1 verse 2 tells us that we are supposed to meditate on God's Word day and night. We are never supposed to speed read through the Bible. You know, you'll have a lot of people there, you know, they speed read and mark with their highlighter, you know, I've got this, I've got this. And there's so much that you will miss if you don't take one scripture at the time and break each scripture down looking for key words and for, you know, for main points that God is trying to make. Because like I said, there's just so much that, that you will miss. Uh, if you don't meditate on these scriptures and take your time and go through them. And, and for those of you who are saying that, well, a lot of times the Bible is just too hard to, to understand. Um, well, um, James uh, chapter 1 verse 5 says that we should always ask, pray, and ask God for wisdom. For God will give wisdom liberally to those who pray and ask. And he will, he will show you a greater understanding of His Word, of His will in your life, of the many things that He wants for you that you feel confused about. If you will pray for that wisdom, God will give it to you and things will become clear to you, especially uh, of the Scriptures in, in, the, in, the, in the Word of God. But let's look at exactly what John 3.16 really means. Let's look at it more in depth. John 3.16 says, For God. God is a power word. He is our creator. We need to stop and look at these power words. For God so loved. Love is another key word, or I call a power word. Love is not an emotion. Love is a decision. Love is an action. For God so loved the world. The world is not just talking about human beings. If, if, if Jesus was talking about hum, human beings, he would have said, For God so loved human beings. But no, Jesus said, For God so loved the world. The world is his entire creation. For God so loved the world that he, he is another, Another power word. He meaning God. For God so loved the world that He gave. God gave to us. He gave generously to everybody. It's not something He had to do, but it is something that He has given to us. He gave to us. For God so loved the world that He gave His. His is another power word. His is meaning something personal to God, something that personally belonged to Him or personally meant something to Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only, only meaning no other. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten. Begotten is an offspring. For God so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son. Son is another power word. Son meaning his beloved child. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever is anyone, it's not for just a select few, it's for anyone and everyone. It's for everyone is invited and not just a select few. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, believeth is another key word, believeth meaning beyond a shadow of a doubt. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him, Him meaning Jesus, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not. Not meaning it will never happen. It's not, well, maybe it could be, you know, 
it, there's a possibility. No, this means should not or will not happen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Perish means you will never see death. You will never be separated from God. That's our guarantee. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That everlasting life is a key word, meaning that life will never end for us. It will go on and on forever and ever, where we will reign with the Lord forever and ever. So as you see here, John 3.16 has a much greater meaning. Uh, like I said, if you will meditate um, on, the, on, the, on the Word, on each scripture, I've never heard a preacher or anyone, uh, any type of preaching, break down John 3.16. As I said, you should break down each scripture. You know, when you're reading about it, you should break each scripture down. Look for detailed words. Look for power words. Uh, if you have to, you know, look up some of the meaning of these words. Um, because, like I said, you know, you really need to have a firm understanding of what God is trying to teach you or trying to show you or tell you. Anyway, I hope that this message has been encouraging to you or uplifting to you or just interested, interesting to you in some way. Uh, and as I said, please continue to uh, remember me, our, our, our leaders, and, and, and so many others that are in need of prayer those that have lost a loved ones, those especially that are sick. And just just continue, my prayer is to continue um, to pray that, that, that people will, will turn back to God. For we need God's healing in this land. We need God to stop these pandemics, these viruses that the people are sending out amongst the other people. It, um, Satan is running rampant right now. He, he's got people working against other people. And we really need that prayer against evil. We need to stop Satan from coming against us. We need to rebuke him in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> and so he will stop coming against us, stop coming against other people, and having other people, um, you know, using other people against us. Uh, God bless and stay safe.